Hi, everybody. We're going to cover the box now with the book claw. Uh, so I did a little inset here, and I've zoomed in a little closer for this part because I want you to be able to see the little details that we're going to do once we cover. The covering is really the easy part where we just put the book cloth on. So here's my piece of book cloth. It's nine by 13, which is way bigger than we need. Not Maybe not way bigger, but somewhat bigger than we need. Um, and that's a good size. So nine by 13. And first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna start with the inset side. And you can see the box is completely dry at this point. And um, we're just gonna glue it up. We're gonna glue the sides of the box and then wrap the book cloth on it. So I'm getting my glue brush dried off. That was soaking in water. And then I open my glue. And I'm gonna start, so you wanna make sure that you don't seal your box. So make sure, oh, I forgot I was gonna do that little, um, sanding thing. Let me do that real quick. I'll grab my sanding block. Um, yeah, so this is a, a sanding block. You can also just use straight sandpaper. This is a sanding block. It has a piece of, uh, it's just a, like a little chunk that's probably four inches tall of a two by four and then it has sandpaper wrapped around it and just taped on and it just helps you have a flat edge but you do not have to have this you can easily just use a piece of sandpaper let me just grab that because you're not going to have that um and you don't need to but if you ever need to sand something um and you want to make sure it stays flat that having that block is nice so there's just one little lip here that's sticking out and so i'm just going to gently sand it down a little bit just to make it more even with the rest of the box and if it's sticking out too far you can actually take your exacto and just kind of shave it down a little bit if it's sticking out and then continue to sand and I've had students go crazy with this part and I don't recommend doing that because you can easily tear your box apart accidentally, you know? So as soon as you can feel that it's flatter, I wouldn't, you know, go too wild with that. And everywhere else, I feel a little bit of a bump right there, right on my corner. And that, you know, it might take a little more work to get it completely flat, but I feel like that's a little bit better and that's all I'm going for right now. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that step. So if you wanted to be real super perfect about it, you can. So I'm gonna set that out. And now what I was saying is you don't wanna seal the box. So you wanna make sure when you're putting that on, I'm gonna glue this side, I'm gonna put it on with the the, the mouth of the box facing out, and then I'm gonna wrap it around as I go, but just make sure you don't accidentally do that. So I'm gonna start on the, the face here, and I'm just gonna take the glue and paint it, brush it on to, and I'm making sure I get into my little inset that I peeled out. And you don't have to use newsprint because you can just hold it. Just get your fingers out of the way, do one section at a time. And if it starts to drip over the edge, just kind of brush it down so it's not dripping. Oops. And then again, I'm gonna put it so that the mouth is facing out. And I also wanna center it on here so I have enough head and tail so that when I'm covering the bottom portion, I can uh, have enough material. So it doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but you just want to check that you have enough. Okay, so I'm getting it in place. And then I am going to take a second and go around the edges and take my bone folder and work that book cloth down into the inset. Now, sometimes if I know I have a label for this area, 
you can split the book cloth with a knife. Just kind of do a little X in the middle. This is if you know it's going to get covered. If you just want the shape, I wouldn't do that part because you will see the split because now the cloth can pull apart and get into the corners. So if I do a cut like that, it just releases the, the cloth so that it can go into the corner. That's sort of an advanced step. But if I make a little label for this pack of books, the little um, the set of the pamphlets, I could put my label in there and it would look really nice because it's going to look really sharp. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and bone fold around the edges here. And then I'm going to do that more as I get towards the end of the box. So, okay, so that's the first side. And then I'm going to paint the glue, brush the glue onto the spine. And now I don't need to hold the box up in the air anymore. I'm just using the tabletop. And I, sometimes I'll come over the edge just a little bit just to make sure that I have glue on that edge. So I'm gluing like, I'm going to hold it up just so you guys can see. that and then I'm going to kind of hold the book cloth and I'm rolling it so it's like I'm pushing this direction and I'm pulling the cloth that direction so it's going to have a real sharp corner and then I can pick it up and again I'm going to fold it on the back just kind of use your thumb or on at that corner to make sure it's sharp And then you're gonna do the last panel. So you just brush the glue on. <clears throat> and then do that last edge. So again, you can do this little move where you pull it, because that way I can push back and get a real tight corner back there. Right here. And then just go and fold it down. And this book cloth is so pretty. It's such a lovely color. It's from Talis and it's called Duo. So it has this kind of two-tone effect. It's kind of got this orange and yellow color and it's really pretty. wondering about that okay so now I can do some of the trimming so we're gonna trim so you can see it's not even where the four edges that's the first thing I'm gonna do is trim this one looks pretty straight it's like three quarters of an inch and here's where again you can use your little measuring device and see what it is and then just make it even so this is like not quite three quarters so I'm gonna do five eighths so I'll just do five eighths and five eighths down here. Now this is a little bit tricky because there's no, I can't get anything in there to trim it. So I actually have to do it from the outside. I can use my triangle. I'm trying to hold that back so you guys can see, I'm gonna lay this on there so you can see. Um, I'm just lining up onto those marks and I'm just gonna hold it down. Let me scooch it up a little bit. And I don't like that because you can see why. It's such a small space. I don't have enough material to hold it down. So it is a little bit tricky to do, but I'm holding it down and then cutting. And I kind of like this tool because it doesn't have that cork underneath. Makes it a little easier to cut. So there's that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this edge, five eighths. This one's a bit better because I can at least put my ruler on it. So I'll do it with the ruler this time. You can see a little bit, see those tick marks. Maybe you can, hopefully you can. Lay the scissors on there for a second so you can hold that back. So I'm just finding my tick marks, lining it up, 
and then I'm just going to cut it. And I'm using the back of my ruler because I want it to lay down flat and make sure it doesn't, but you got to hold it tight so it doesn't slide. And I think it did a tiny bit, but that's okay. Okay, so, that, so that's the four edge trim. That's the first thing I want to do. And then the second thing I want to do is trim those back corners at the other end of the box. So this is the spine, the, the four edge, the opening. And then I want to trim back here to release these flaps so I can do all of the trimming. So this is where it gets pretty finicky as far as what steps you've got to take and the little cuts that you've got to make. That's why I tried to zoom in close here so you can see this. So right here, I'm just going to, at these back corners, back at the spine of the box, I'm going to cut straight out from the book cloth. It's a little bit, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm using the point of my triangle and I'm just putting it in the corner and then I'm going to cut straight out as best I can. And if I have to trim this up later, I'll show you how to do that. So there's one side released. And so here I could, because I released one side, I can get my triangle in there and I'm using the top of the box as my parallel, you know, as so I can line up my triangle and then I can just cut like that. I can tell I was a little bit crooked with that, but that's okay. And I'll show you how to straighten that up. So again, I'm gonna cut straight out and then use my triangle to square it up, top of the box. And then, you know, I'm cutting backwards. So it's a little bit of a crossover my arms, my hand like that. So that's why it's a little bit hard to do. That one was better. Okay, so I just released these flaps at the spine. And now I'm gonna trim, oh, scared myself. Tr uh, trim those down to a quarter inch. So I'm gonna just do it with scissors so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just at that back spine, I'm just cutting a little flap like that. And then I'm going to miter those corners on the back. If you look right here, snip. Just snip them off so that they won't stick out when we glue them down. So just a little quarter inch trim. Whoops, it's not perfect, don't worry. This is going to get glued down. Okay, so that's going to get glued down like that. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to make my covers on the top the same size as the width of the box across the top. So if I was doing a whole edition of this, I would have, I would have cut an extra one of these pieces, C or D, so that then I could just use that as my little guide to cut them all the same size. And that's what I do when I'm making, you know, 35, 50 books or whatever, or, or cases, I'll do things like that. But for this, this is the step I do when I'm just doing a one of a kind. I just take the book cloth and I fold it right at the edge. I can kind of see the edge of the board and I just make a little crease. And then I take my pencil and I just go across and make two little dashes. And that's where I'm gonna cut right there at those dashes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other four edges as well. Go ahead and cut those. So a crease and then side of a pencil right across that fold to make my little tick marks. And then I was talking about earlier, so when you look at that, that's crooked. So that's gonna be the one I put down first. If you look right here, that's the one that I miscut. This is gonna be the straighter one, but this is gonna cover it. So when I go down, that's gonna be my top layer because it's not gonna show once I glue it down, but it's the straighter one. But you can also square these up if you need to. So when you're making these, this is a good time to go ahead and just take your square. And if you've got a look, that one's pretty straight. I'm not gonna trim that one because it's already a little short, but like this one, I'm gonna just straighten it up because it's pretty raggedy. And then uh, it's gonna go underneath. I've already decided. This is gonna be the one I glue down first. So I just kind of trimmed that off. This is going to go down, then this one's going to go down, and then that one's going to go on top. That's after I trim them. So I haven't done that. I'm just squaring up these back corners or these back edges. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. First, I make my little crease right up against the edge. And then cut. Sorry, not cut. 
make a little tick mark, but I will cut them in a second. Do this side. And then cut. Sorry, I keep saying cut. It's kind of late in the day. I'm tired. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that. And then I'm going to square up these little back edges like I was talking about. And just barely shave off just to straighten it up. And that wasn't a bad corner. To get a little stray thread, just clip it. And this one, you know, I'm just looking and trying to determine. And it looked a little bit long, so I am going to square that one off. This one's hard to do because I'm cutting, again, I'm crossing my hands because I'm right-handed. It's a little hard to do. I don't think I'm, I'm cutting it straight. Also casting a shadow with my arm, that's not helping. Yeah, okay, so I squared, I squared those up. And then I'm gonna determine which one once in a few minutes after I trim this. So the other thing I'm gonna do right now is just trim off those little where I made those tick marks. So again, let me put a tool up here so you can see what I'm doing. So where I made those little dashes, I'm gonna put my ruler down. It's sliding, so I'm gonna actually use the cork side. I'm having a little problem with that. And then once I get my lines uh, lined up, cut. And then I'll do the other side like this. Line up to my dash marks. And cut. Oops. Okay, same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and just show everything because it doesn't take that long. No, no need to stop it. But if you wanna forward through it, of course, you can do that. And the tool, you don't have to do that. I'm just doing that so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. All right, let me get a little scrap out of the way and then we start gluing those flaps down. Oh, we have one more trim to make it the fore edge. So out here, okay, so we have these two flaps. So we're gonna glue this down in just a second, but I also wanna test. So like this one I was talking about, it looks short right here. So that's probably gonna be the one, no, it's this one. That one's a little crooked. This one's way off. I cut it and I, it, was a, it was all raggedy. So this is gonna get glued down, then this one. So this is the one I'm gonna notch because we want one that's gonna have a flap in the front and then one that's gonna get trimmed right here. So this is the one I'm gonna notch. So I'm gonna put a little X right here. And then I want at the other end of the box, I prefer it if I could have my little flap be on this flap. So there's one on this side and there's one on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my little mark, but let me just check that that's okay to do. I think these two were cut a little straighter. So this is, this one's a little further out, but it's pretty close. Oh, good, that's the one I need to notch. So that one's gonna get notched. And then on this side, this is gonna get notched. Okay, so that's, I mean, it really doesn't matter. So if you had something that was a mistake where you did a big cut like that, and you have to do them both on the same side, it's fine. But it's just kind of nice if you, are gonna put this one down and that one down. And then on the other side, you're gonna put this one down and that one down. So then the, those folds are on the opposite edges of the box. This is again, like a little bit of an advanced, you know, crafty thing uh, that, not crafty, but what I mean by that is craftsmen like things to be a certain way <laughs> and they want things to look good. And that's what I mean by that, not like, cross stitching or whatever. Not that there's anything wrong with cross stitching. Um, 
So we're going to do those little notches. I was just look, thinking about that inset and wanting to straighten that. So where I put that X, I actually need to make a little cut. I'm going to cut away this little angle right here, like a little L shape. So I'm going to cut straight out from the top of the box. So I'm lining this up with the top of the box and I'm going to cut straight out. And then I'm going to put my tool up against the fore edge of the box and cut from that corner straight up. So I'm just taking a little notch out of the book cloth. And then on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to hold this back so you can see across from the top of the box, cut straight out. And then I take my tool and I'm going to go straight up from that corner and just take a little notch out. Okay. So you can see now that they are catty corner to each other. So there's one on this side, one on this side. And that's what I was just talking about. Like that's going to get glued down. Then this one's going to get glued down. And then we're going to have just one flap across the front here. So we're going to do that. And I am going to just film everything. I'm not going to turn the camera off. This is, I, time I do need a piece of scrap paper. So, oh, actually first I want to glue down those little flaps in the back and I don't really need newsprint for that part. I'm just gonna just glue that up real quick and push it down. If there's any glue, just, you know, you want to make sure those corners are covered and they should be no problem. And then on this end, I'll go ahead and do that one. Just glue in that flap. You can see I'm getting glue on the box a little bit and on the cloth as well. And then you just put that down flat. Okay. And then you're going to glue the short, the notched edge, the notched uh, side goes down first. So I'm gonna glue that. So here's how I use a piece, one piece of newsprint. I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna just kind of go down like that as I go. So one piece and that way I don't have to keep pulling out scrap paper. So I'm gluing this up. Just gluing the cloth this time, not the box. And then I fold that down. And so that's why I left a little bit of a gap when I measure is because this actually stretches a little bit. Like all materials do when it gets gluey and wet with glue. Um, it stretches. And if there's a little wobbly area at a corner, I usually just take my bone folder and tap that down. And then I'm gonna glue this side, but I'm just gonna glue really to the fore edge there at the front of the box. I don't have to go past that, but if I do a little bit, it's no big deal. So don't use too much glue. And again, I'm just trying to back up where I started with my scrap piece. So just be careful that you don't Use a ton of glue because it'll get messy. And then, so I, you know, I got it a little bit on the other cloth, but that's fine. That's what I want. It's going to go down on top of it. So just check that corner right up here at the fore edge. It's going to be bent right now, but I just gave it a pinch so that I could make sure it's down flat. And oops, I got glue on there. So take a second and wipe it off if you set it in the glue like I did. And I'm doing that thing that I hate, which is to work on top. I'm just trying to watch and keep it on one side, but yes, I should really move that away. Okay. And then I already glued this down so I can do my short edge first, the notched edge. This down. Unfold it. And then one more time. Right here. Okay. So 
I'm gonna pinch right there. And then I just want it to be glued down real tight so that that edge just kind of blends together and you don't see it so much. Okay. All right, so I'm just checking all around to make sure it's looking glued down. Everything looks tight. Okay, so now we're gonna do the little trims for the fore edge. Now, this is the finicky time. This is the persnickety little cuts that we're gonna do. They're not hard, but the first time you're doing them, you're like, this is crazy. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's a lot to keep up with. Um, so we'll just do them. I'm gonna show it twice. I'm gonna show each end of the box, and then we're just gonna be gluing that and turning it in, and that's the end but it is a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna move all my scraps out of the way. I am gonna need the, the uh, trash paper, the newsprint, <clears throat> but I'll just hold on to that. So this is where having a small little L-shaped tool or your triangle, I'll demo with the triangle so you can see, but I love these little, this is from Micromark. It's called a Zona L-square and it is, that's the brand, Zona. And it's great. Um, Micromark, they make these and they make triangles. I believe you can get both from that, that place, Micromark. Um, so if, you're, if you like little tools, but these are great. They're stainless steel. They have centimeters uh, and inches on it. And I just, I use this all the time. This is what we, we have, and this is perfectly fine. It's just a little bit big for a box like this size. So, but there, there's a side that's released right here. And I'm going to put the triangle in and I'm going to do that same cut that we did at the back of the box. I'm going to just cut, line my triangle up and then I'm just going to cut straight out. So I just want to hold that down tight and cut straight out. And I'm just releasing this little flap. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just turn the box over, put it up to the corner and pull, cut straight out like that. So now you have two long flaps down the side and you have these two pieces here and you should have just a single because we trimmed it off underneath. And uh, yeah, that's right. I don't know why I got kind of lost in my process there. All right, so now I'm gonna draw on here the cuts that we're gonna make so that you can look back at them because this is good, this is a good view. Um, I'm gonna actually draw them on here. So at the little small tongues, we'll call them, you're gonna make like a little 45 degree that's right the width of the box and then straight out and i know this is like what <laughs> but you'll see when i when i hold it flat so a little 45 on both sides of the fore edge of the box and then straight down and that's what you're going to cut away pencil is not showing very well okay 45 and straight out it's like I got glue on it or something. Try this again. Yeah, there was glue on it. Okay. And then again, I'm going to draw it on this end. So you're going to do a little 45 right at the corner of the box and then straight out. A little 45 and straight out on each side. And that's going to get cut away. So I'm just drawing this on so you can see, and then I'm going to hold it flat so you can see everything. So then on the long side, you're going to cut a little notch at each edge. So that's going to be the width of the box. So it's like the width away and the width, you're making like a little square corner that's going to stay. And then you're going to come straight out. So it's a little L-shaped notch right at the corner and it's the same width as your box material. So then at this end, same thing, you're gonna go. And then straight out. So that's what's gonna get cut like that. And then same thing on this side. A little L-shaped notch, it's a little rectangle. And then like that. Okay, so if you look at this, from above, hopefully you guys can see this. You've got your little 45s here and then straight out, XX, that's gonna get cut. You got your little l shape notch and that's gonna just be like a little tab left and then straight out. Same thing at this, the bottom, 
and the same thing on this end. So you can see that little 45 and then straight out, little L shape and straight out. Okay, so now I'm going to do all those cuts. And I usually do that little 45. I don't draw them usually because I, I can know how to do this and I've done it a billion times. So just do that. And if it's not perfect, you know, don't worry too much. Again, always do the best you can. And if you saw, I was kind of laying my knife down almost flat so that I could pull it straight out. That helped me be able to cut a straight line because at first it was like a little resistant because it's a small piece of fabric that I'm cutting. So I'll show you this again. I'll show the camera one more time when um, after I've cut all that. So those are the little tongues, the little short pieces I cut first, and then I'm just going to go in and out. Sometimes right at that little corner, it's hard because you don't want to overcut. So you can sometimes get a little thread that's hanging on like that. <laughs> so you might want to just kind of take your blade and slide it. Okay. And then again here, hopefully you can see this. It's a little bit of a shadow. Out. And then the last one is like that. Okay, so I'll hold this up again. So now you can see the cuts actually removed what it looks like. Okay, so they're really, it's, it's, it, I mean, it makes sense once you've done it, you're like, oh yeah. But, you know, how would you know to do that? All right, so then we're going to glue the two long sides first, those are going to get turned, glued and turned in. And then this is going to be like your little closing piece, that little 45 at the corners that makes it look finished on the outside. It's just like that little finishing touch is the mitered corner like that. So that long side first, just going to, you don't need a lot of glue for that because you just, you don't want to over glue it because it'll squeeze into the box there. Just kind of pouncing that glue on. Move this out of my way. Because now the box is ready. I definitely don't want glue on it at this point. So I'm pushing that down and turning it in. And then I'm going to take my bone folder real quick before I move on. Just bone fold that down tight. And at the forehead, fore edge. Same thing on this side. A little bit of glue. <clears throat> and then again, close it down, walk your thumb, push those edges down at the fore edge. And it looks really nice if you do that because it's going to be sharp. And then inside, you just want to bone fold it. You guys can't see what I'm doing in there, but I'm like bone folding that flat down. And at the edges, just make sure you get, get that down. And now these little tongues can just glue it. Oops, that's too much glue. And turn it over like that. And then if it's looking a little raggedy, you had to snip threads or whatever, you can just kind of bang it down a little bit and it makes it, I don't know, the, the fabric kind of seal itself to itself. And then make sure you bone fold inside at those corners, especially. And then same thing on the last one. So the covering is, it's the easiest part, but also the most difficult because it's this little finicky cutting that is not, not very intuitive. 
but that's okay. We don't need to be intuitive because I'm showing you how to do this. And so I've given you guys a handout, sort of a prep handout and a worksheet for this. And then, so there it is all finished. And again, I can take my little bone folder and hammer this at, gently. I'm not hammering hard. There's a weird little spot where that, it's like the orange thread is showing. So I keep thinking it's bored, but it's not. Okay. But anyway, so that's our, our set. And here's the books. They go right in there. Ta-da, done. It's a really nice little set. Um, so yeah, all right, that's what you're gonna do. So I was saying that there's handouts, uh, there's a little diagram, and some. so those cuts are diagrammed for you, and it'll make sense if you see it with the video, and then if you look at the drawing, it's gonna make more sense. Um, so yeah, that's it for the slip case. If you wanna make it for something else, you can make it for another book. If you don't have those pamphlets, you can make it for um, the drum leaf or the tunnel book that we made. So can't wait to see what you guys do. See you next time. One more little thing, guys, I wanted to show you. I started thinking about this as soon as I turned off the camera. You can make a label. So, um, you know, I haven't drawn anything on this label, but I just wanted to show you this. I showed it one day during class. Um, if you have like a shaped inset, you can always lay a piece of paper that has too much printing on it. Let's see something that has less. Sorry, this is a good thing to know how to do, how to make your label. So um, like if you have a little piece of paper and you have a shaped uh, inset, you can take your piece of paper and just sort of transfer. I just laid it on top and I'm transferring that size to it. And when I make my label, sometimes I'll just do it on top of that. And just, I want the label to inset, to be inside of that a little bit. So I could transfer like that. And then this would be, you know, and then I could cut that out, transfer it to another piece, like, cause I don't want that white, it's going to show too much through if I glue that down. But that's a way to get your shape, especially if you had some kind of organic shape. For a label that I, you know, maybe you've already printed something that you know the size, um, but you could do it like this too. So what I'm doing is I'm laying it in there just a little bit inset, and then I'm going to make a little tick mark right there. And then I'm going to make another little tick mark at the bottom of that. So, but I am setting it in just a tiny bit because I don't want it to overlap and, and curve up that little, the wall of the inset there. So I want to be careful. And then down here, I'm just going to make another little tick mark where I want it to sit. And then I can take my little square and cut out my label. And you, once you know your size, you could lay something out on the computer, you could print something, you could stamp on it, whatever you wanted to do. And cut it out later. You can even cut inside like a frame or whatever. So here's my little label that I wanna glue in there. So the reason I want it to be a little smaller is because when I glue that, like we were talking about before, when I glue this, it's gonna stretch. So here's my little scrap and I'm going to quickly glue this down just to show you, let me wring out my brush again because I'd already taken my brush out and I thought, I don't think I've shown this before. So let me show you this. Just make sure that water really squeeze it out because you do not want this piece of paper to get wet. So I was taking my time getting that water out. So I, there was like drawing or writing on the back of this piece of paper, but I'm gonna just glue that out. Move it and hold it down. <coughs> Excuse me. The grain direction doesn't really matter, but as you can see, the grain is actually running here. Because when I got it wet, it immediately curled. 
and that's the grain, but this is a tiny little piece that's going on here. It's not going to affect anything. It's not going to pull or do anything like that. And then I just put it in place. Just a thin amount of glue because you certainly don't want glue squirting out underneath this label as you put it in. You could also use double stick tape to put your label on. I, think I missed a little bit of the corner right here. Like it didn't get gluey. Might have got wet, but not gluey from that glue. I mean, from the water. See? Showed you why. That was all planned. Just to show you what happens. <laughs> okay. So then just bone fold it down tight. And there's your little label for your box. Okay. All right. I just wanted to show you that as a little extra step and kind of a cool finishing uh, piece. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.